All righty. Now let's talk about that third uh, diagnostic information, which is routed hydrograph plots. This stuff is so cool. I like this part a lot. Okay, so and here's that flow chart where you can kind of see these are the, we just talked about simulated input plots and sensitivity plots, and now we're going to talk about the third type, routed hydrograph plots. Okay, so what's really neat is that you can actually scroll through every single routing that happened um, in your simulation and examine what was selected. Um, so just like most of the plots that we've looked at so far, the plot is showing the inflow hydrograph in blue, the outflow hydrograph in red, and the stage in green. So that can help um, interpret the results. And then down at the bottom, you can see those parameters that you entered in, the user-defined parameters um, for top of dam, spillway, and inflow design flood. Those are being reflected in horizontal lines at the top of your plot, usually, um, or wherever they happen to fall in terms of the stage. And then, um, and then it's also got those three curves listed in the legend. When an expected or median simulation is run, there's only one realization, but 10,000 routed hydrograph events. So that's what Alan was describing a little bit earlier. When you're just running, that's how it creates the expected curve. Here we can see two routed hydrographs from a full uncertainty simulation. For this simulation, the user selected 100 realizations. And recall that for each realization, 10,000 inner loop routed hydrographs are computed. So you can see in this example, we're showing the difference between the realization that was the 5 of 100 event versus the 5,000 out of 10,000 event. Um, and the realizations are 57 of 100, oops, sorry, 57 out of 100 and let's see, I lost my place, and 5,000 of 10,000. I think I just said that, but anyway. Oh yeah, they're at the top. So. You can see that those are on the, on the plots there. Uh, the left hydrograph has a peak inflow of 88,000 CFS, while the right has a peak inflow of 112 CFS. The left hydrograph has a peak stage of 1135 feet, and the right has a peak reservoir stage of 1141 feet. The left hydrograph released a maximum discharge of 25,000 CFS, and the right hand released a maximum discharge of about 75,000 CFS. So this is another case where um, it might be good to check your y-axis and see if that's um, the same from plot to plot to make sure that you're kind of getting a good sense for what's, what's actually happening there. When you're toggling through each of the routed hydrographs, tabular output for the inflow, outflow, discharge, and reservoir stage can be accessed by selecting the tabular output button. So this allows you to copy and paste this into a spreadsheet if you so wish, or some other, um, some other program. Once the tabular output window opens, the user can right click within the table to see three options, select all, copy, and copy with table headers. Each time you run a simulation, it's very important that you scroll through multiple routed hydrographs to look for red flags. One of the red flags that you want to look for is flat spots. So there's a really obvious flat spot at the top on, the, on this example. On the outflow discharge or the reservoir stage hydrographs is where you're ac often going to see these flat spots. And flat spots along the stage and discharge plot indicate that the stage storage discharge curve did not extend high enough and needs to be extended to higher stages. So that goes back to our lecture where we talked about extrapolating that curve. Um, this is the reason why, because if you don't get it high enough, then for some of these simulations, you're not gonna have good results. A second type of red flag to look for is the variety of hydrograph shapes being sampled. You'll want to verify that all the in different inflow hydrograph shapes that were selected in the simulation are being sampled and used in the reservoir routing. In this graphic, you can see three different blue inflow hydrograph shapes. So you can see that center one looks like it might be daily data. Um, try to use that as less often as possible. That's probably grammatically terribly incorrect. But um, as much as possible, you want to try to use hourly or 15-minute data for those types of hydrographs because if in the center one, you're missing the peak 
Um, you've got probably the general volume and timing, but you're missing the peaks. And so it's not really a very good one to select for this type of, of model. So I just wanted to mention that. The last red flag to look for is one of the most common user mistakes. When you're examining the routed hydrographs, you'll also want to make sure that the time window is long enough for all the hydrograph shapes. In the hydrograph on the left, you can see that the time window is too short and cuts off the green stage hydrograph before the peak pool is achieved. In the hydrograph on the right, you can see that the time window is long enough for the full inflow hydrograph to be routed and the reservoir has reached the peak pool. So this is, remember back to when I was talking about the inflow hydrograph shapes, and I said sometimes you might have to manufacture a little bit of a longer hydrograph to make sure that it meets your time window. This is the reason why. So, and just a reminder, you don't want to add volume, so keep it somewhere low and just extend it so that it's long enough, but it doesn't add volume. <clears throat> 